Hey guys, and welcome back to the tutorial. Uh, so this is where we left off last time. Uh, we have our first person shooter and uh, destruction of voxels, both in the terminal and in the buildings. Um, so one thing we'll notice with this is if we can get a look at our shadow on the ground there, we only see the shadow of a gun. Uh, and that's because our character is actually only a gun and some arms. If we go to the game mode here, we can find our character under the default pawn class. Let's browse that and pull it up. And if you select viewport, you can see what the character is. So one thing you want to do, um, not only so you can see your legs, more realistic shadows, is to put a full character there. And if you ever did multiplayer, you would want the other players to be able to see the full body as well. So what we're going to do today to simplify this is um, we we'll use a starter pack called the Animation Starter Pack, and this will provide us a bunch of animations as well that we can use in the future to make our character look more realistic and do more things. Um, so what you can do is find that in the UE Asset Store. It is free. Um, we're gonna add that to our project here. Select your engine version and add to project. Should just take a moment. And then pull your project back up. Inside the content drawer, we should have a new folder called Anim Starter Pack. While we're here, we can delete this uh, these old files for what we saved as new map. They're not something we're gonna use in the future. So inside this starter pack, there's a lot of animations that could really help you get going, um, as well as uh, the basic Unreal Engine mannequins. So what we'll do initially is we'll go back to our map here and we're going to change our pawn to be this UE4 ASP character. Let's go ahead and we browse this and pull it up. Go to the viewport again. We can see we have a similar character. The arms are in the same form, and except we have the entire body. We're missing a few things with this, but let's, for fun, go ahead and play. All right, so I was able to uh, start the world, and uh, you notice we have a character that moves a little bit differently. It can strife right and left, forward, backwards. Um, but we are no longer holding the gun and uh, we're no longer able to shoot. So let's go ahead and edit this and uh, take care of those things. So going back to our UE4 character, um, we'll also notice that the camera angle was significantly different. It was more like a third person. For the time being, to carry on our first person camera angle, let's pull the camera forward and uh, see how that looks. So. This is a little bit more like first person. Uh, I do see some issues with that. Let's take a closer look. It looks that like the camera is really holding to that left shoulder. So I'm gonna move it over um, and probably up a little. Let's go ahead and give that a shot. So I can see the hands, we're not holding a gun yet, so it's a little hard to pull that perspective. So let's go ahead and get the gun set up. Um, so we're going to want to attach the gun to a socket on the skeleton of our character. Now, this mesh doesn't come with a socket for the gun, so we're going to need to go and add it. So if you select mesh on the left and then find the um, mannequin on the right here, we find this mannequin skeleton file. When we open that, there's all of these different um, joints on the skeleton. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the right hand. If 
if we uh, click, we might be able to find it easier. Here we go. The right hand. And then you can see the index fingers, middle finger, pinky. I mean, every single joint. It's really cool, actually. But in this right hand, we're going to go and we're going to hit Add Socket. And what this is going to do is going to add another place where we can tie things to the skeleton. I'm going to move it down and into the hand a little, just so then it's a little closer. I'm also going to right click this and actually first let's save and then I right click and hit add preview asset and I'm going to search gun. And this will just help give us some perspective of what that might look like. Now I noticed that the gun is turned sideways. Um, and that's something that we'll fix on the uh, character in a different file. But just as a little bit of perspective, it seems reasonably close. So let's go ahead and hit save and let's come back here. And let's go uh, back and find that gun. Here it is. We're gonna drag this under our character mesh. And that has now placed it in our viewport. With the gun selected on the left, we're gonna to go to the right and choose a parent socket. We're gonna choose that socket we just created. So now let's move the gun up to that hand position. And if you notice the animations of the arm moving, the gun is moving with it. So what we wanna do is now take that gun and get it to where it could be in a better position. So let's go ahead and rotate it forward. Probably move it back a little bit. Now that front hand is under the barrel and is closer to the trigger. So this is something you can really fine tune if you'd like. However, this is looking uh, pretty decent for the purposes of this tutorial. So let's go ahead and compile and save that and let's take a look in the game. So as we're looking down, we can see the barrel of the gun. You see the player's shadow on the ground and the shadow of the gun. Um, some camera work we can do, like right now I'm looking into my own hand. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and let's edit this camera a little bit. Let's bring it up a touch and see what that does. Let's uh, even bring it back a touch and see what we end up with. Okay. So this isn't too bad for the moment. Um, again, we can add in some other animations later so that you know maybe the character holds up the gun and aims down the barrel so the gun will be a little bit more in our vision. Uh, or we could play more with the camera as well. But for the moment, this is uh, serving the purpose that we need. So <clears throat> now what we need is the ability for our gun to fire because we can run around and we can hold the gun, our cameras, a little bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original uh, character, which was under Voxel. Um, it was the first, let's see here, first person cubic destruction character. Let's go ahead and select that. Now, in order to make this a little easier, because we're going to do a lot of copy paste, I'm going to split these windows. This here and this one up here. Now, what I'm doing with this is I'm basically putting our new character up top and our old first person uh, cubic destruction character on the bottom. So I can copy over a lot of the things. So there's a couple of functions here on our old character that we're gonna to need to copy. So we'll right click copy and then we'll go to functions on our new one and paste those. And what we're trying to do is basically give our new character the functions that it already has plus uh, some of these old ones that uh, we were using before, specifically the functions to destroy the voxels. So I'm going to move these out of the way. These are the movement components and our new character already has those. But all of this other stuff is related to the voxel destruction. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those. 
and I'm going to control C to copy those. Go back to the event graph on our new character. And I'm going to go down and give some space because this is quite a large graph. Highlight all that and move it up some. So it's closer to our other ones. Okay, great. Now, if we go ahead and we were to compile this, we're going to run into some uh, errors. These errors are pertaining to variables that we haven't set up. So on our old character, let's go ahead and grab some of those variables. And we'll just copy paste them to the top variables, just like how we did the functions. At any time during this, if you think you've gotten all the variables, you can hit compile up here and some of your errors should go away, but we still have some. Um, so these must be some things that we're still missing. So I'll continue to go, and then when I get a little bit closer, I can uh, check by compiling again. Okay, it looks like we got most of the uh, variable issues taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and um, make this full screen again. So it looks like we have um, an issue with a reference to mesh here. Mesh1P was the old mesh that we were using before, so let's go ahead and use delete that and bring in our new mesh and tie that to there. Compile and it took care of that issue. And then it looks like we have an input action crouch issue. So just like in one of the earlier videos uh, with the input actions, we're gonna go and do edit project settings. Down on the left, we're gonna select input and we're gonna add a new keybind to show how to crouch because this character is already set up to have that. So we're gonna do crouch and let's uh, tie that to the left control. Perfect, we can exit out of that. Compile and it looks like all of our errors are taken care of. So let's go ahead and play and we'll see what happens. So we're in that first person view again we're able to fire the gun and destroy the VIX boxes like before. And we can see our shadow. So this will be good when um, we use a, if we're in some sort of multiplayer scenario, so then the other uh, players can see our entire body. Anyways, thanks for joining us on this tutorial. Um, hope to see you on the next one. Um, we'll continue to use some of these animations to um, help this character do more things that seem more realistic. Thanks.